Welcome everyone to the Fairy Frequency Channel. Am I dreaming? Today I'm going to be reading to you from Exploring the World of Lucid Dreaming by Stephen LeBurge, PhD, and Howard Rheingold. This book was also, um, is the the second book to Lucid Dreaming, if you've ever read that one. It's another great book by Stephen LeBurge. So today's chapter is chapter six. And remember, I want to encourage you to, if you haven't uh, seen the previous chapters of this series, you can find them in our original playlist titled Exploring the World of Lucid Dreaming. And if you're new to our channel, please remember to smash the like for us, hit the big red button and the little bell so that you get all of our channel notifications. Very glad to join us today. So chapter six, Princes, Principles and Practice of Lucid Dreaming. To dream or not to dream, how to stay asleep or wake up at will. So far, you have learned various techniques for increasing your dream recall and inducing lucid dreams. Perhaps you have succeeded in having a few lucid dreams at will. Now that you are learning to realize what you are dreaming, what can you do with this knowledge? As discussed previously, one of the most fascinating possibilities is the ability to control dreaming. It may be possible to dream anything you choose, as the Tibetan dream yogis believe. But before you can try, you need to be able to remain asleep and retain lucidity. Novice lucid dream dreamers often wake up the moment that they become lucid. They can recognize lucidity clues, apply state tests, and conclude that they are dreaming, but are frustrated because they wake up or fall into non-lucid sleep soon after achieving lucidity. However, this obstacle is only temporary. With experience, you can develop the capacity to stay in the dream longer. As you will see in a moment, there are also specific techniques that appear to help prevent premature awakening. Continue to apply will and attention to your practice, and you will be able to refine your lucid dreaming skills. Preventing Premature Awakening Informally experimenting in their beds at home, lucid dreamers have discovered various ways, to, various ways of remaining in the dream state when threatened by early awakening. All the techniques involve carrying out some form of dream action as soon as the visual part of the dream begins to fade. Linda McGowan, editor and publisher of the Dream Network Bulletin and an interpret explorer of lucid dreams, has described how she prevents herself from waking up by concentrating on the senses other than vision, such as hearing and touch. She reports that all of the following activities have successfully prevented awakenings from visually faded dreams listening to voices, music, or her breathing, beginning or continuing a conversation, rubbing or opening her dream eyes, touching her dream hands and face, touching objects such as a pair of glasses, a hairbrush, or the edge of a mirror, being touched, and flying. These activities all have something in common with the spinning technique described on page 140. They are based on the idea of loading the perceptual system so it cannot change its focus from the dream world to the waking world. As long as you are actively and perceptually engaged with the dream world, you are less likely to make the transition to the waking state. McGowan may be a dreamer with an unusually active REM system. It may be that she has little trouble staying asleep when she is in REM. However, many others are light sleepers who find it difficult to remain in lucid dreams for long periods of time. These people need more powerful techniques to help them stay in their lucid dreams. Harold von Morse Masmer, 
was one of the handful of researchers who personally investigated lucid dreaming in the first half of the 20th century. He was the first to propose the technique of looking at the ground in order to stabilize the dream. The idea of focusing on something in the dream in order to prevent awakening has independently occurred to several other lucid dreamers. One of these is G. Scott Sparrow, a clinical psychologist and author of classic, of the classic personal account, Lucid Dreaming, The Dawning of the Clear Light. Sparrow discusses Carlos Castaneda's famous technique of looking at his hands while dreaming to induce and stabilize lucid dreams. Sparrow argues that the dreamer's body provides one of the most unchanging elements in the dream, which can help to stabilize the individual's otherwise feeble identity in the face of a rapidly changing dream. However, as he points out, the body isn't the only relatively stable reference point in the dream. Another is the ground beneath the dreamer's feet. Sparrow uses the idea in the example of one of his own lucid dreams. I walk on down the street. It is night, and as I look up at the sky, I'm astounded by the clarity of the stars. They seem so close. At this point, I become lucid. The dream shakes momentarily. Immediately, I look down at the ground and concentrate on solidifying the image and remaining in the dreamscape. Then I realize that if I turn my attention to the pole star above my head, the dream image will further stabilize itself. I do this until gradually the clarity of the stars returns in its fullness. Dream Spinning Some years ago, I had the good fortune to discover a highly effective technique for preventing awakenings and producing new lucid dream scenes. I started by reasoning that since dream actions have corresponding physical effects, relaxing my dream body might inhibit awakening by lowering muscle tension in my physical body. The next time I was dreaming lucidly, I tested the idea. As the dream began to fade, I relaxed completely, dropping to the dream floor. However, contrary to my intention, I seemed to awaken. A few minutes later, I discovered I had actually only dreamed of awakening. I repeated the experiment many times, and the effect was consistent. I would remain in the dream state by dreaming of waking up. However, my experiences suggested that the essential element was not the attempted relaxation, but the sensation of movement. In subsequent lucid dreams, I tested a variety of dream movements and found both falling backward and spinning in the dream to be especially effective in prolonging my lucid dreams. Here is the method for spinning to remain in the dream state. The spinning technique. Number one. Notice when the dream begins to fade. When a dream ends, the visual sense fades first. Other senses may persist longer, with touch being among the last to go. The first sign that a lucid dream is about to end is usually a loss of color and realism in your visual imagery. The dream may lose visual detail and begin to take on a cartoon-like or washed out appearance. You may find the light growing very dim, or your vision becoming progressively weaker. Number two, spin. As soon as the dream begins to fade, as soon as the visual imagery of your lucid dream begins to fade quickly before the feel of your dream body evaporates, stretch out your arms and spin like a top with your dream body, of course. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter whether you pirouette or spin like a top dervish, child, or bottle, as long as you vividly feel your dream body in motion. This is not the same as imagining you are spinning. For the technique to work, you must feel the vivid sensation of spinning. Number three, while spinning, remind yourself that the next thing you see will probably be a dream. Continue to spin, constantly reminding yourself that the next thing you see, touch, or hear will probably be a dream. Number four, test your state wherever you seem to arrive. Continue spinning until you find yourself in a stable world. You will either still be dreaming or have awakened. Therefore, carefully and critically, test which state you are in. See chapter three. Commentary. If I think I have awakened, I always check the time on the digital clock beside the bed.
This usually provides a foolproof reality test. Frequently, the spinning procedure generates a new dream scene, which may represent the bedroom that you are sleeping in or some other unusual place. Sometimes the just faded dream scene is regenerated in all its vivid glory. By repeatedly reminding yourself that you're dreaming during the spinning transition, you can continue to be lucid in the new dream scene without the special effort of attention. You are likely to make you are likely to mistake a new dream for an actual awakening, in spite of many manifest absurdities of dream content. A typical false awakening would occur if, while spinning, you felt your hands hit the bed and you thought, well, I must be awake since my hand just hit the bed. I guess spinning didn't work this time. What you should think, of course, is since the spinning hand that hit the bed is a dream hand, it must have hit the dream bed. Therefore, I'm still dreaming. Don't fail to critically check your state after using the spinning technique. Effectiveness of spinning. This method is extremely effective for many dreamers, including myself. I used this technique in 40 of the 100 lucid dreams in the last six months of the record for my doctoral dissertation. New dream scenes resulted in 85% of these cases. Lucid consciousness persisted in 97% of the new dreams. When spinning led to another dream, the new dream scene almost always closely resembled my bedroom. The experiences of other lucid dreamers who have employed this method have been very similar to mine, but suggest that the post-spin lucid dream need not be a bedroom scene. One of these lucid dreamers, for instance, found herself arriving at a dream scene other than her bedroom in 5 out of 11 times she used the spinning technique. These results suggest that spinning could be used to produce transitions to any dream scene the lucid dreamer expects. See Spinning a New Dream Scene Exercise, page 161. In my case, it appears that my almost exclusive production of bedroom dreams may be an accident of the circumstances in which I discovered the technique. I have tried, with very little success, to produce transitions to other dream scenes with this method, although I've definitely intended to arrive elsewhere than my dream bedroom. I cannot say that I fully expected to. I believe I will someday be able to unlearn this accidental association, if that is what it is. Meanwhile, I'm impressed by the power of expectation to determine what happens in my lucid dreams. How does spinning work? Why should dream spinning decrease the likelihood of awakening? Several factors are probably involved. One of these may be neurophysiological. Information about head and body movement monitored by the vestibular system of the inner ear, which helps you keep your balance, is closely integrated with visual information by the brain to produce an optimally stable picture of the world. Because of this integration of information, the world doesn't appear to move whenever you move your head, even though the image of the world on the retina of your eye moves. Since the sensation of movement during dream spinning are as vivid as those during actual physical movements, it is likely that the same brain systems are activated to a similar degree in both cases. An intriguing possibility is that the spinning technique, by stimulating the system of the brain that integrates vestibular activity detected in the middle ear, facilitates the activity of the nearby components of the REM sleep system. Neuroscientists have obtained indirect evidence of the involvement of the vestibular system in the, re in the production of the rapid eye movement bursts in REM sleep. Another possible reason why spinning may help postpone awakening comes from the fact that when you imagine perceiving something with one sense, your sensitivity to external stimulation of that sense decreases. Thus, if the brain is fully engaged in producing the vivid, internally generated sensory experience of spinning, it will be more difficult for it to construct a contradictory sensation based on external sensory input. What to do if you do awaken prematurely? Even if you find that despite your best efforts to stay asleep, you still wake up, all is not lost. Play dead.
If you remain perfectly motionless upon waking from a lucid or non-lucid dream and deeply relax your body, there is a good chance that REM sleep will reassert itself and you will have an opportunity to enter lucid dream consciously as described in chapter 4. For some people with a strong tendency to remain in REM sleep, this happens almost every time they awaken from a dream until they decide to move. Alan Worsley is one of the world's most experienced lucid dreamers. He has been conducting personal lucid dreams, dream experiments since the age of five. During the 1970s, he was the first person to signal from a, for a, luc from a lucid dream in pioneering experiments carried out in collaboration with Keith Hearn. Worsley appears to possess this felicitous sort of physiology, and he offers the following advice for dreamers who have just awakened but yearn to return to their lucid dreams. Lie very still. <laughs> Sorry. Lie very still. Don't move a muscle. Relax and wait. The dream will return. I've had dozens of lucid dreams in a row with this method. Preventing loss of lucidity. Use inner speech to guide your thinking. We have used language to control our thinking and behavior since we first learned to speak. Our parents would tell us what to do and how to do it, and we were guided by their words. When we first did these things under our own direction, we would repeat out loud the parental instructions to remind ourselves of exactly how and what we were trying to do. Now having fully incorporated the role of parental guide within us, we repeat the instructions silently to ourselves when carrying out complicated new procedures. We can also use verbal direction of conscious behavior to regulate our behavior in the lucid dream. For instance, to maintain awareness that it is a dream until becoming and staying lucid is a well-developed habit. We are all too likely to lose lucidity any time our attention wanders. The moment we take a bit too much interest in some facet of the dream, lucidity vanishes. If you are a novice lucid dreamer and have problems maintaining your lucidity, a temporary solution is for you to talk to yourself in your lucid dreams. Remind yourself that you are dreaming by repeating phrases like, this is a dream, this is a dream, this is a dream, or I'm dreaming, I'm dreaming. I'm dreaming. This self-reminder can be spoken out loud in the dream, if necessary. Otherwise, it's better to say it silently to prevent the repetition from becoming the predominant feature of the dream. Sparrow recommends the same procedure, advising dreamers with shaky lucidity to concentrate on an affirmation which serves as a continuous a continual reminder of the illusory nature of the experience. He considers it essential that the affirmation, for example, this is all a dream, be learned by heart and cultivated in the waking state in an order to be an effective aid in the dream state. After you have acquired some experience, you will learn to recognize the situations in which you tend to lose your lucidity and find that you can maintain your lucidity without conscious effort. Learning to do this can happen fairly rapidly. In my first year of studying lucid dreaming, I lost lucidity in 11 of 62 lucid dreams. In the second year, I lost lucidity in only one of 111 dreams and in the third year, only one of 215 dreams. In the following 10 years, my rate of lucidity lost has stayed at less than 1%. Awakening at Will My first lucid dream arose from my discovery as a child of five that I could wake myself from frightening dreams by trying to shout, Mother! I have found a paradoxical-sounding but simple technique for waking at will. Fall asleep to wake up. Whenever I decide I want to awaken from a lucid dream, I simply lie down on the nearest dream bed, couch, or cloud, shut my eyes, and go to sleep. The usual result is that I immediately wake up, but sometimes I only dream that I wake up, and when I realize I'm still dreaming, I try again to wake up for real, sometimes succeeding at once, but sometimes only after an amusing sequence of false awakenings. 
BK, Palo Alto, California. When I was a little girl, about six years old, I came up with a method for awakening myself when dreams got too unpleasant. I don't recall how I came up with the idea, but I would blink my eyes hard three times. This worked well for a while and got me out of some pretty horrific and surrealistic scenarios. But then something changed, and the method began to produce false awakenings. When I once used this technique to end a mildly distasteful dream, only to find myself awakened, awakening in my bedroom just before the arrival of a terrible hurricane, and certain that the experience was real, upon actually awakening, I decided to abandon the practice. LL, Redwood City, California. If the secret to preventing premature awakening is to maintain active participation in a dream, the secret to awakening at will is to withdraw your attention and participation from the dream. Think daydream, or otherwise withdraw your attention from the dream, and you are very likely to awaken. When five-year-old Alan Worsley called out for his mother in the physical world, he was directing his attention away from the dream, as well as possibly activating the muscles of vocalization in his sleeping body, which could awaken him. But nothing could provide a better illustration of the, the principle of waking by withdrawing attention from the dream than Beverly Kidzerski's formula, go to sleep to wake up. After all, what does sleep mean but withdrawal of attention from what is around us? Another way of withdrawing your participation from the dream is to cease making the usual rapid eye movements, so crucially characteristic of REM sleep. Paul Tholley has experimented with fixation on a stationary point during lucid dreams. He found that gaze fixation caused the fixation point to blur, followed by dissolution dissolution of the entire dream scene and awakening within 4 to 12 seconds. He notes that experienced subjects can use the intermediate stage of scene dis dissolution to form the dream environment of their own wishes. Artist and dream researcher Fariba Bogzaran describes a very similar technique called intentional focusing, in which she concentrates on an object in her lucid dream until she regains waking consciousness. However, the examples here show that using methods to awaken from dreams may lead to false awakenings. Sometimes the false awakenings can be more disturbing than the original dream you were trying to escape. In general, it is probably best not to try to avoid frightening dream images by escaping to the waking state. Chapter 10 explains why and how you can benefit from facing nightmares. An example of good use for techniques of waking yourself at will from lucid dreams is to awaken yourself while you still have the events and revelations of the dream clearly in mind. Two kinds of dream control. Before you go on to before we go on to discuss ways in which you can exercise your will over the images of your dreams, let's consider the uses you can make of your new freedom. When faced with challenging dream situations, there are two ways that you can master them. One way involves magical manipulation of the dream, controlling them or it, while the other way involves self-control. As it happens, the first kind of control doesn't always work, which may actually be a blessing in disguise. If we learn to solve our problems in our lucid dreams by magically changing things we didn't like, we might mistakenly hope to do the same in our waking lives. For example, I once had a lucid dream about a frightening ogre whom I confronted by projecting feelings of love and acceptance, leading to a pleasurable, peaceful, and empowering resolution in my dream. Suppose I had chosen to turn my adversary into a toad and get rid of him in that way. How would that help me if I were to find myself in a conflict with my boss or another authority figure who I might see as an ogre in spite of my being awake? Turning him into a toad would hardly be practical. However, a change in attitude might indeed resolve the situation. Generally, a more useful approach to take with unpleasant dream imagery is to control yourself. 
Self-control means control over habitual reactions. For example, if you were afraid and you run away, even though you know you should face your fear, you aren't controlling your behavior. Although the events that appear to take place in dreams are illusory, our feelings in response to dreams' events are real. So when you're fearful in a dream and realize that it is a dream, your fear may not vanish automatically. You still have to deal with it. This is why lucid dreams are such good practice for our waking lives. We're free to control our responses to the dream, and whatever we learn in so doing will readily apply to our waking lives. In my ogre dream, I gained a degree of self-mastery and confidence that I that has served me as well in the waking world as in the dream. As a result of such lucid dream encounters, I now feel confident that I can handle just about any situation. If you'd like to enhance your sense of self-confidence, my advice is that you'd be wise to control yourself, not the dream. Flying. I read about your work and the techniques you suggested for having lucid dreams. I practiced noticing whether I was dreaming. The first night, after several non-lucid dreams, I suddenly remembered to ask myself if I was dreaming. As soon as I answered yes, something happened that your article did not mention. Everything in the dream became extremely vivid, and visual aspects were like someone turned up the contrast and the color and I saw everything in great detail. All my dream senses were amplified. I was suddenly intensely aware of temperature, air movement, odors, and sounds. I had a strong sense of being in control. Even though I had not planned to fly, something in the dream made me think about flying, and I simply leaped into the air, Superman style, and flew. The sensation was the most exhilarating and realistic dream experience I've ever had. I flew down a canyon of tall buildings, gradually gaining altitude. The buildings gave way to a park. When I embarked upon some aerial acrobatics, it was my last dream of the night, and the feeling of exhilaration lasted all day. I told everyone who would listen about the experiment and the success I had. G.R. Westboro, Massachusetts. One night, I was dreaming of standing on a gentle hill, looking out over the tops of maples, adlers, and other trees. The leaves of the maples were bright red and rustling in the wind. The grass at my feet was lush and vividly green. All the colors about me were more saturated than I have ever seen. Perhaps the awareness that the colors were brighter than they should be shocked me into realizing that I was in a dream. And what lay about me was the real, was not real. I remember saying to myself, if this is a dream, I should be able to fly into the air. I tested my hunch and was enormously pleased that I could effortlessly fly and fly anywhere I wanted. I skimmed over the tops of the trees and sailed many miles over new territory. I flew upward, far above the landscape, and hovered in the air, currents like an eagle. And when I awoke, I felt as if the experience of flying had energized me. I felt a sense of well-being that seemed directly related to the experience of being lucid in the dream of taking control of the flying. J.B. Everest, Everett Washington Flying dreams and lucid dreams are strongly related in several ways. First, if you ever find yourself flying without the benefit of an airplane or other reasonable apparatus, you are experiencing a fine dream sign. Second, if you ever suspect that you are dreaming, trying to fly is often a good way to test your state. And if you want to visit the far corners of the globe or distant galaxies in your lucid dreams, flying is an excellent mode of trans transportation. If you think that you are dreaming, push off the ground and see if you can float into the air. If you are indoors, after you fly around the room, look for a window. Go out the window and strive for altitude. Curiously, more than a few dreamers, most likely city dwellers, have reported that they sometimes find an obstacle in the form of electrical power lines that seem to prevent their passage. Some of these oneironauts report a surge of energy, often accompanied by a burst of light when they fly through the power lines. 
beyond that barrier, Onironauts have flown around the Earth to other planets, distant stars and galaxies, even mythical realms like Camelot or Shangri-La. Flying is fun, and therefore worth doing for the sheer joy of it, even if you aren't determined to reach a specific destination. People seem to be able to fly in just about any manner imaginable. According to the hundreds of reports we have received, many people fly Superman style, with their arms extended in front of them. Also common is swimming through the air, probably because the closest experience we get to flying in the air is flying in the water. Others sprout wings from their backs or their heels, flap their hands, or straddle jet-powered cereal boxes, or flying carpets, or supersonic easy chairs. One way to challenge yourself and to begin to fly is to jump off of tall buildings or cliffs. Uncontrolled falling is a common theme of nightmares, and the following anecdotes suggest the potential usefulness of lucid dream flying for overcoming this terror. My attempts at flying lucidly were the most interesting adventures I've had in lucid dreams. I have a great fear of heights, so falling in dreams while not nightmarish is common for me. I always wake up before I land, but attempting this exercise I read in your article, I flew over places which would have terrified me in a dream before, open water, snowy mountains. One night I was soaring in outer space and coming back to earth, no fear involved, but coming eventually to a small ledge in a mountain, I was afraid to land and almost woke up. Using your techniques, especially spinning, I forced myself to deliberately land on the very edge. I could see the mountains below, feel the cold, even smell the fresh air. It was really a great feeling to know I could not be hurt, because if I started to fall, I could just fly away again. NC, Fremont, California. Extending your dream senses. I gained consciousness Conscious control in one of my dreams, I took a bicycle ride because I decided I'd like to broaden my sensual experience. As I pedaled, I called out the senses, hearing, and I heard my own heavy breathing, smell, and I smelled a whiff of cigarette smoke. I touched a big rough bark tree, heard the flapping of sparrow's wings, saw much greenery, felt the handles of the bicycle. My senses were so alive, just as good as if I were awake. Yet I knew I was dreaming. This excited me incredibly. I pedaled furiously to get back, to wake up, but I woke up feeling refreshed. LG, San Francisco, California. Most people are astonished to discover that they are dreaming. The astonishment stem stems from the realization that they have been fooling themselves in a colossal way. It is definitely a surprise, especially the first time, to learn that you are normally Trustworthy senses are reporting to you an absolutely flawless portrayal of the world that doesn't exist outside the dream. Indeed, one of the most common features of first lucid dreams is a feeling of hyper-reality that happens when you take a good look around you in a dream and see the wondrous, elaborate detail your mind can create. First-time lucid dreamers often know a marked, pleasurable, heightening heightening of the senses, particular, particularly the sense of vision, hearing, smell, touch, taste can intensify instantly, as if you had found the volume control knob for your senses and turned it up a notch. Give it a try. Play with your senses, one at a time, as you explore the dream world. And during daily life, we all have very good reasons for turning out our senses so we can for tuning out our senses so that we can concentrate on getting our jobs done. In your dreams, however, you can learn how to turn them back on again. Senses are marvelous instruments for providing data about events inside and outside our bodies. Our brains structure this data into the models of the world that we experience. We have all learned how to think, perceive, believe, and model the world in a certain way. And the greatest part of this learning took place when we were infants. The world modeling process was automatic long before we were able to think about it. Therefore, it comes as a surprise when we discover in lucid dreams that the drama we perceive as real might only be a kind of stage set, and all the people in it but mental constructions. However, 
once we get used to the notion. It is natural and empowering to begin to take conscious control of our senses in the dream state. The Dream Television In the early 1980s, continuing his dual role as lucid dream explorer and researcher, Alan Worsley developed an interesting series of television experiments. In his lucid dreams, he finds a television set, turns it on, watches it, and experiments with the controls to change such things as sound level and color intensity. Sometimes he pretends that the TV responds to voice control so that he can ask it questions and request it to display various images. Worsley reports that I've experimented with manipulating imagery as if I were learning to operate by trial in an internal computer video system, including scrolling, panning, changing the scene instantly, and zooming. Further, I've experimented with isolating part of the imagery or parking it by surrounding it with a frame, such as a picture frame or proscenium arch backing away from it, windowing. Exercise the dream television. Before bed, set your mind to remember this experiment. When you achieve lucidity, find or create a large, ultra-high resolution, total surround sound television set. Make yourself comfortable, turn it on, find the volume, brightness, and color saturation controls, and slowly experiment with them. Turn the sound up and down, tweak the color. When the picture is right, imagine the smell of your favorite food wafting right out of the picture tube. If you're hungry, allow it to materialize. Savor a sample. Conjure up velvet pillows and satin pajamas. Give all the senses a workout. Observe what is happening in your mind as you adjust the color or contrast control on your world modeling television monitor. Manipulating Lucid Dreams I dreamed of falling down the side of a building, and as I fell, I knew I was still unprepared to face the fall, so I changed the building to a cliff. I grabbed onto foliage and shrubs that grew down the side and began climbing down confidently. In fact, when someone began falling from above me, I caught him and told him to think of footholds and plants to support him because it's only a dream, and you can do what you want in it. And I enjoyed a totally new excitement and headiness of purposely facing danger and risk. It was deeply gratifying and a proud moment in my life. TZ, Fresno, California. In this dream, I was at my mother's house and I heard voices in another room. Entering the room, I realized without a doubt I was dreaming. My first command was ordering the people in the room to have a more exciting conversation since this was my dream. At that moment, they changed their topic to my favorite hobby. I started commanding things to happen, and they did. The more things began to happen, the more I would command. It was a very thrilling experience, one of the most thrilling lucid dreams I've had, probably because I was more in control and more sure of my actions. R.B. Chicago, Illinois. Two weeks ago, I had a dream of being pursued by a violent, tornadic storm. I was on a cliff high above an open expanse of beach and had been teaching others to fly, telling them that this was a dream in a dream and all you have to do is fly, is all that you have to do to fly is believe you can. We were having a great time when the storm appeared, coming in from the ocean, tornadoes and I go way back in dreams. They are some of my pet monsters of my mind. When this one appeared, it was announced by exceptionally strong winds and lightning and high waves. A young boy, a puppy, and I were together for some time, running and seeking shelter. But then we stopped, poised on the very edge of the last great cliff before the open sea. Panic was bringing me close to the point of losing lucidity. But then I thought, wait. This is a dream. If you choose, you can keep on running, or you can destroy the tornado or transform it. The storm has no power to hurt the boy or the puppy. It is you at once. Anyway, no more running. See what it is like from within. As I thought this, it was as though some exceptional force lifted the three of us, almost blurring our forms as we were pulled toward the tornado. The boy and puppy simply faded out about mid 
midway. Inside the storm, there was a beautiful translucent whiteness and a feeling of tremendous peace. At the same time, it was a living energy that seemed to be waiting to be shaped and at the same time was capable of being infinitely shaped and reshaped, formed and transformed over again. It was something tremendously vital, tremendously alive. M.H. Newport News, Virginia. Taking actions in dreams can mean many things. You can command the characters or manipulate the scenery. As in the examples quoted above, you can decide to explore part of the dream environment, act out a particular scene, reverse the dream scenario, or change the plot. Although, as explained above, the greatest benefit from lucid dreams may come not from exercising control over the dreams, but from taking control of your reactions to dream situations. Experimenting with different kinds of dream control can extend your powers and appreciation of lucidity. Paul Foley mentioned several techniques for manipulation of lucid dreams. Manipulation prior to sleep by means of intention and auto-suggestion, by wishing, by interstate, by means of looking, by means of verbal utterances, with certain actions, and with assistance of other dream figures. Chapter 3 showed how intention and auto-suggestion can influence lucid dreams. Manipulation by wishing is amply illustrated by Oniranauts who transport themselves and change the dream world simply by wishing it to happen. Manipulation by interstate is particularly interesting. Bali says this about it, referring to his own research findings. The environment of a dream is strongly conditioned by the interstate of the dreamer. If the dreamer courageously faced up to the threatening figure, its threatening nature is generally gradually diminished and the figure itself often began to shrink. If the dreamer, on the other hand, allowed himself to be filled with fear, the threatening nature of the dream figure increased and the figure itself began to grow. Manipulation by means of looking plays an important part in Thali's model of appropriate lucid dream activities. He cites his own research in support of the hypothesis that dream figures can be deprived of their threatening nature by looking them directly in the eyes. Manipulation by means of verbal utterances is explained thus. One can considerably influence the appearance and behavior of dream figures by addressing them in an appropriate manner. The simple question, who are you, brought about a noticeable change in the dream figures so addressed. Figures of strangers have changed in this manner into familiar individuals. Evidently, the inner readiness to learn something about oneself and one situation by carrying on a conversation with a dream figure enables one to achieve, in this fashion, the highest level of lucidity in the dream. Lucidity is to what the dream symbolizes. Spinning, flying, and looking at the ground are examples of manipulation by certain actions. These are actions that stabilize, enhance, or prolong lucidity. Other dream figures may be able to help you manipulate dreams to find answers, resolve difficulties, or just enjoy yourself. Reconciling with threatening dream characters can help you to achieve better balance and self-integration. This application of lucid dreaming is a key topic in Chapter 11. Getting Places in Dreams On a more basic level, to get to the most, to get the most out of lucidity, you need to know how to get around in the dream world. For many lucid dream applications, you may wish or need to find a particular place, person, or situation. One way to achieve this is by willing yourself to dream about your topic of choice. This is often called dream incubation. It is a timeless procedure used throughout history in cultures that consider dreams valuable sources of wisdom. In ancient Greece, people would visit dream temples to sleep and find answers or cures. Dream temples are probably not necessary for dream incubation, although they certainly would have helped sleepers to focus their minds on their purpose. This is the key. Make sure that you have your problem or wish firmly in mind before sleeping. 
To do this, it is helpful to arrive at a simple single phrase describing the topic of your intended dream. Because for the purposes of this book, you are trying to induce lucid dreams, you need to add to your focus the intention to become lucid in the dream. Then you put all your mental energy into conceiving of yourself in a lucid dream about the topic. Your intention should be the last thing you think of before falling asleep. The following exercise leads you through this process. Exercise Lucid Dreaming Incubation Formulate your intention. Before bedtime, come up with a single phrase or question encapsulating the topic you wish to dream about. I want to visit San Francisco. Write down the phrase and perhaps draw a picture illustrating the question. Memorize the phrase and the picture if you have one. If you have a specific action you wish to carry out in your desired dream, I want to tell my friend I love her. Be sure to formulate it now. Beneath your target phrase, write another saying. When I dream of the phrase, I will remember that I'm dreaming. Number two, go to bed. Without doing anything else, go immediately to bed and turn out the light. Number three, focus on your phrase and intention to become lucid. Recall your phrase or the image you drew. Visualize yourself dreaming about the topic and becoming lucid in the dream. If there is something you want to try in the dream, also visualize doing it once you are lucid. Meditate on the phrase and your intention to become lucid in a dream about it until you fall asleep. Don't let any other thoughts come between thinking about your topic and falling asleep. If your thoughts stray, just return to thinking about your phrase and becoming lucid. Number four, pursue your intention in the lucid dream. Carry out your intention while in a lucid dream about your topic. Ask the question you wish to ask. Seek ways to express yourself. Try your new behavior or explore your situation. Be sure to notice your feelings and be observant of all the details of the dream. Number five. When you have achieved your goal, remember to awaken and recall the dream. When you obtain a satisfying answer in the dream, use one of the methods suggested earlier in this chapter to awaken yourself. Immediately write down at least the part of the dream that includes your solution, even if you don't think the lucid dream has answered your question. Once it begins to fade, awaken yourself and write down the dream. You may find on reflection that your answer was hidden in the dream and you did not see it at the time. Creating new settings. Dreams of this degree of lucidity also let me change the shapes of objects or change locations at will. It's lovely to watch the dream images sort of shift and run like colors melting in the sun until you have all around you is shifting, moving, living color, energy, light. I'm not sure how to describe it. And then the new scene forms around you from this dream stuff, this protoplasmic modeling clay of the mind, MH. Newport News, Virginia. Another way to dream of particular things is to seek them out or conjure them while you are in a lucid dream. In other lit literature about dreams, you may find some objections to the notion of deliberately influencing the content of dreams. Some believe the dream state to be a kind of psychological wilderness that ought to be left untamed. However, as discussed in Chapter 5, Dreams arise out of your own knowledge, biases, and the expectations, whether or not you are conscious of them. If you consciously alter the elements in your dreams, this is not artificial. It is just the ordinary mechanism of dream production operation at higher level of mental processing. Dreams can be sources of inspiration and self-knowledge, but you can also use them to consciously seek out answers to problems and fulfill your waking desires. Changing dream scenes at will can also help you to get acquainted with the full illusion creating power at your disposal. Seeing that the world around you can switch from a Manhattan cocktail party to Martian canals at your command will be much more effective than the words in this book for teaching you that the dream world is a mental model of your own creation. The increased sense of mastery over the dreams gained 
by knowing that you can manipulate it if you wish will give you the confidence to travel fearlessly wherever the dream should take you. Your power here is precisely as large as your imagine as you imagine it to be. You can change the color of your rocks. Re Sorry, that's the color of your socks. You can change the color of your socks. Request a play. Let me start over. You can change the color of your socks. Request a replay of the sunset or a segu to another planet of the Garden of Eden. Simply be, simply by wishing, here are a few exercises you can experiment with if, in trying to direct your dreams. Not much is known about the best way to achieve scene changes in dreams. So take the following exercise as hints and then work out your own method. Spinning a new dream scene. In my dream spinning experiment, I wanted to go to the setting of a book I'm reading. I wanted to solve the mystery in the book. I reached my target. I started at the point the book began, met the characters in the proper sequence, and when I went to the point in the book where I was with another character in the book who is a wizard, he took a running start, leaped off a mountain fortress wall, and turned into a hawk, thereby escaping his enemies. I also jumped off the wall and changed into a hawk. I dressed and spoke in the manner of the characters and took an active part in solving the mysteries in the book. SB, Salt Lake City, Utah. Spinning during this, the course of lucid dreams may do more for you than merely prevent premature awakening. It may also help you visit any dream scene you like. Here's how to do it. Exercise. Spinning a new dream scene. Number one, select a target. Before going to sleep, decide on a person, time, and place that you would like to visit in your lucid dream. The target, person, and place can be either real or imaginary, past, present, or future. For example, for example, Padmasabhava, Tibet, 850, or Stephen LeBurge, Stanford, California, the present or my granddaughter at home, the year 2050. Number two, resolve to visit your target. Write down and memorize your target phrase. Then vividly visualize yourself visiting your target and firmly resolve to do it in a dream tonight. Number three, spin to your target in your lucid dream. It's possible that just by the intention you might find yourself in a non-lucid dream at your target. However, a more reliable way to reach your target is to become lucid first and then seek your goal. When you are, lucid, when you are in a lucid dream at the point where the imagery is beginning to fade and you feel you are about to wake up, then spin, repeating your target phrase until you find yourself in a vivid dream scene, hopefully your target, person, time, and place. Exercise. Strike the set. Change the channel. Think of this as the opposite of the kind of magical transportation involved in spinning and flying. Instead of moving your dream self to a new exotic locale, simply change the environment of your dream to suit your fancy. Start with a small detail and work up to greater changes. Change the scene slowly, then abruptly, subtly, then blatantly. Think of everything you see as infinite, malleable modeling clay for the mind. Some Oneira knots have elaborated on Alan Worsley's example of the dream television. When they want to change the scenery, they imagine that the dream is taking place on a huge three-dimensional television screen, and they have the remote control in their hand. Doing the impossible. I dreamed that I was at a party recently and having a boring time when I stood back from the dream and knew it was a dream. I then had a great time projecting myself into being whoever was having fun. At first, I just tried being women, but then I said, it's a dream. Why not be a man and see what that feels like? So I did. B.S. Albuquerque, New Mexico. In waking life, we are used to restrictions for almost everything we do. There are rules about how to act, how not to act, and what is reasonable to try. 
one of the most commonly quoted delightful features of lucid dreaming is great unparalleled freedom. When people realize that they are dreaming, they suddenly feel completely unrestricted. Often for the first time in their life, they can do or experience anything. In dreams, you can experience sensations or live out fantasies that are not probable in the waking state. You can get intimately acquainted with a fantasy figure, but you could also become that figure. Dreamers are not limited to their accustomed bodies. You can appreciate a beautiful garden or you can be a flower. Alan Worsley has experimented with bizarre things like splitting himself in half and putting his hands through his head. Many O'Neoronauts pass through walls, breathe water, fly, and travel in outer space. Forget your normal criteria. Seek the kinds of things that you can only do or be in dreams. And that is the end of chapter six. So remember, folks, if you've missed any of the previous chapters to this amazing dreamy book, you can find them in our original playlist titled Exploring the World of Lucid Dreaming on our playlist tab. And if you want more information on dreams, you can also check out our original collaborative playlist titled Dreams and Visions. And that's full of all kinds of great information also on our playlist tab. And then we'd also love it if you'd check out our community tab too. There, there you'll be able to find some of those um, exercise uh, dreaming target techniques so that you can remember to ask yourself, am I dreaming? And don't forget to ask yourself, folks, am I dreaming? Thanks again for joining us today. Wishing you all a beautiful day.